Good morning, you one, and welcome to the second part of your smells lesson for outdoor learning. Remember we talked about the five senses last time? Can you tell me what they are? Yes, that's right. There's seeing, hearing, tasting, feeling, and smelling. And today, again, we're going to focus on smells. If we look at this image, we can see that there are different types of smells going up the nose. There's onion, fish, cheese, and garlic. Some of these smells are good and some of them are bad. Now, we as humans have grown up to understand that there are good smells and there are bad smells. And these can differ for each person. A good smell for me might be a bad smell for you. I like the smell of onion, but you might not like the smell of onion. You like the smell of fish, but maybe I don't. So there are differences between the different types of smells that we have. But there are also smells that are bad for everybody. And these are like dangerous smells. So we have to be aware of what a smells mean danger. For example, if I smelt wood burning, I'd know that there was a fire. So that means to me danger, but it would mean the same to you. It means that the something is on fire. So we have to be aware that there are good smells and bad smells that can change an opinion from different people, but there are dangerous smells that mean danger for everyone. Some of the different types of smells we can have are fragrant smells. And these are smells that we get from flowers and perfume. They could be fruity smells. These are the smells that come from all different types of fruits that aren't the citrus fruits. There are then the citrusy smells like lemon, lime and orange. Or there's a woody smell like the pine or fresh cut grass or the forest. There's chemically smells ammonia and bleach and those are mostly from cleaning products we might smell a lot of them in the current climate there's sweet smells those smells that you walk past when you walk past somewhere in the mall and you know that that small shop is selling ice cream or chocolate and you can smell that sweet chocolate smell there's minty or peppermint smells that come from all different types of mint plants or the eucalyptus plant. There's toasted or nutty smells such as popcorn and peanut butter. And then there's pungent smells like cheeses or smokes. And then there's that decaying, bleh, horrible smell that usually means danger. And that's from like rotting meat or the sour milk. And that's a kind of danger smell. Did you know that there are artists around the world that use smelly art? This is where they get smells and they put smells into their piece of artwork. So if I was to draw a nice picture of a piece of fruit, they've included the smells of that fruit into the paint. So the picture doesn't only just look like fruit, it smells like fruit too. And then we can think of how we can use this idea of smelly art. Abu Dhabi and Dubai are very famous throughout the world for putting on amazing art shows. And some of these art shows recently have included the smelly art. This is the art that we said includes smells as well as sight. Your challenge today is to create your own type of smelly art.
When thinking about my smelly art, I had to decide on what kind of picture I was going to draw, and then what kind of smells I got from that. <clears throat> so I decided to draw a picture of where I am from in Wales. And the smells that remind me of that are the mint and beet, the earthy smell of the beetroot and the earthy smell that you get from tea and the sweet smell that you get from mint. Those are the smells that remind me of home. So I'm going to use those smells in my painting. So I'm going to take a little bit of mint and I'm going to add it into the tea. And I'm going to use this as my paint. From using the mint in the tea, I can really start to smell my painting. My painting is starting to come alive, not just visually and what I can see, but the smells that are starting to come through from the mint. That really nice, sweet, earthy mint smell. And hopefully now I can start to use the beetroot to be able to give me a different type of smell for my son and then eventually my entire painting will be made up of complex different smells and I will have my own smelly art. Don't forget this is your challenge is to be able to create your own smelly piece of art. I chose where I was from and the smells that remind me of where you are from. Maybe you could choose where you're from and the smells that remind you of where you're from. Or maybe you could choose a holiday. Or you could choose a particular landscape. Or you could choose an object. But the important thing is to remember is to think of what sm that place or object remind you of in terms of smells? What kind of smells do you remember to be in there? I can't wait to see and smell your artwork.
here we see my final painting where I've got the brown trees and I've put a sprinkle of the mint to represent the leaves. I've got the beetroot colour to be able to give me that sun peeking over the mountains and it gives me that lovely earthy smell from the beetroot. I've got the trees that are painted out of that dark coffee that I've chosen and the mountains are painted from the tea which gives me that lovely earthy smell from the tea leaves as well. All in all, it's a smelly piece of art. I'm really looking forward to what kind of art you can create and what kind of different smells you can use in your artwork.